My name's Mark Charlton and I'm Associate Director of Public Engagement at De Montfort University in Leicester. Being Associate Director of Public Engagement is quite a, uh, has quite a broad remit. So primarily I, you could say I look after the majority of public facing work that goes on uh, by academics and uh, students in the university. So this can be uh, how public engages in the research activity that we're doing. It could even be uh, how the public engages in a uh, initiative that the university is leading in the city it, and it uh, could be uh, students volunteering and giving their time to local community groups. It extends even further down into uh, things like widening, widening participation which is uh, an um, initiative which tries to get young people who, who wouldn't necessarily go to university to engage in the idea of universities and, and view it as a possible place where they might want to come and study one day. So there's quite a broad, uh, a broad, broad remit to um, my work, but bluntly uh, it's public facing stuff which people outside the university can get involved in. And, and no two days are alike. Uh, I know we're in an unusual circumstance uh, in the coronavirus outbreak where we're all staying at home, but actually um, the uh, need for my work is still very high so I haven't been able to um, I've got, I suppose I'm quite fortunate in that respect in that I've been kept continually busy because the university has tried to um, develop a strategic response to the coronavirus in uh, Leicester which is um, like every other major city in, in the country is um, currently facing lots of challenges around medicine deliveries, food banks um, and uh, strategic uh, ideas at, at the local authority level and I've been trying to mobilize um, members of staff and students appropriate to those courses so that the university as an anchor institution for the city uh, with a civic mission is uh, there for the city of Leicester at a time of great need so um, that I guess that shows how on, on a day-to-day -day basis I it's hard for me to predict what's going to come into my inbox and I'm going to have to deal with. Um, but in, And it's certainly been heightened at this time of uh, corona crisis. I uh, started my career as a journalist um, from almost from leaving university. I became a trainee journalist at a newspaper called the Lincolnshire Echo. And uh, from there I work my way up you start as a junior reporter then a senior reporter then you might get the chance to work on a news desk and um, then work your way up the management ladder and that over the course of uh, several newspapers that's what I was able to do um, and I worked also for some national news agencies and also some national newspapers along the way and got some good experience Ultimately, I ended up at the Leicester Mercury as one of the senior managers there. And uh, at that time, things were really changing. This was about 10 years ago. Things were really changing in the newspaper industry. And uh, new newspapers were looking more to online uh, development and, and things like that. And um, at, at that time, there had been several waves of redundancies. And eventually, one uh, came to me, and I decided. I was 38 years old at the time, so I decided uh, um, that uh, I would take uh, voluntary redundancy and um, I would look for another career. So I, taking voluntary redundancy for anyone who reads, reads or hears this video is actually it's quite empowering it's quite frightening in a way you're taking you, you you don't know what you're going to get at the end of it other than redundancy but you kind of take matters into your own hands and that's what i did i i i was fairly convinced that if i didn't get made redundant this time i would get made redundant again and i didn't want to go through that whole process so i sort of took control of the situation and i wrote down a list of uh jobs or, or uh, things that might be um, 
might be applicable to my skill set. And uh, when I wrote down higher education, so I wrote down several things that I, I cared about, like the NHS, for example, I was quite interested in that I might become a press officer for the NHS or um, the, uh, I was quite interested in some charities that that were close to my heart and to Amnesty International in particular, I was really interested in their, their work. Um, maybe I could like get a, get a job again doing PR for that kind of mission. But um, university, I thought, well, I could become a university lecturer. That would be quite interesting. And that's when I started probing around uh, um, higher education websites and I looked at some jobs at, uh, so I live in Leicester. So I looked at obviously the two Leicester universities and and, and there was nothing really there for my skill set. There was something in Coventry, actually, Coventry University that was quite close, but um, again, uh, not really the sort of news experience that I could possibly teach that was that wasn't really relevant and then uh, eventually somebody who worked at De Montfort University said they uh, had a project that had a uh, public engagement project they were starting and my skill set would fit and uh, I took this role of being a public engagement manager for this very small scale uh, uh, project at the time and uh, if you had put that job amongst all the uh, all the different jobs that, that I was looking at, I would never have applied for it because I felt having some primarily at the newspaper, I was involved in some management skills, but I was also um, doing a little bit of design and, and a little bit of uh, sub editing and a little bit of writing. So. My kind of my head was in this. I need to do something where I where I write things. That was that was my main strength. Um, but what this job showed me was that actually those skills that I had, if you flip them on on their head, I could develop my man, my management strengths. So I managed around forty people in my department at, at the uh, at the newspaper. If 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 I could focus on what I was good at. In, in a management sense and the experience I had of working with uh, HR, legal issues, uh, project planning, um, uh, staff development, all of these different aspects, marketing and, and, and things like that. So all these different aspects of your day-to-day -day job that you, you don't think is the core of your job. So, so I started focusing on that and less on the uh, uh, writing element of it and that when I joined the university, I was just a, a really good fit for that. Obviously, I had to learn to work in a new environment, which is very different from a newspaper office where, where uh, I have to say, work, working amongst a bunch of journalists is brilliant and it's exhilarating, but we're not necessarily polite to each other and we're very open in our views about the stories that we're working on or the, the, the types of things that are getting published whereas in, in a uh, uh, university context that you, you need to really use your diplomacy skills a little bit more and, and talk to people a little bit more politely to in order to get things done so there was a complete cultural transition personally into how I'm, I'm behaved in a newspaper office compared to how I behave in my office towards my current staff so um, that I think that's how I ended up working in uh, uh, higher education. But I think the key takeaway from it was to look at your whole skill set and not just focus on one area that, that you think that you're particularly good at. Um, because now, uh, eight eight years into this role, I, I would, wouldn't necessarily my strength say my strengths in writing and journalism anymore. It's in uh, how I run my department for the university. For all of those reasons you mentioned, my, my job cuts across um, across those uh, different fields and the purpose of my job is to demonstrate the impact of a university on its community and it has really three stakeholders in that, in that it has the students who learn at the university, the staff who teach and research in the university and uh, the, the general public who engage with the activities that we're doing. 
and on all three of those levels my job is rewarding uh even and there's even an extra tier to that in the students and staff who i haven't had any interaction with when i see them on graduation days and there's a, such an atmosphere around the university that um three or four thousand students are graduating with with good degrees and they're going to go out into the wider world and do positive things that that alone is incredibly rewarding to be part of that process even if my part of the process is just another cog in a huge wheel it feels very uh unifying as, as a place to work that we all came together and we delivered the opportunity for these four thousand students to graduate in, in my day job i have to deliver impact uh, around um how to give an example work we do in primary schools to um to try and support young people into one day coming to university we often do lots of really enjoyable things um like um we, we, we have a, a game that one of our accountancy academics uh, Aaron Tuga devised um, called Play-Doh where he, he gives uh, a series of primary schools a fictional £1,000 to play the, do the stock market with and um, the idea is they'll learn about percentages and mathematics as they um, follow a 12-week plan to beat the stock market with their investment. It, and that's a really rewarding uh, thing to to follow through and um, not only that because the schools and the uh, young children find it hugely re rewarding and it's part of our university mission but actually the purpose of the game is to teach mathematics and it's to teach mathematics um, in in advance of uh, SATs tests and we, we we have actually had data back that shows that this work that we've been doing uh, uh, boosts uh, outcomes for uh, children in deprived areas who are taking uh, SATs tests. So there, there are lots of little things that are really rewarding, particularly in, in public engagement. There are a lot of headaches, so like it's not uh, um, always uh, rewarding. You have to put a lot of effort in to get, get the rewards. But um, there is, as you um, said in your question there's this underlying feeling of a, a positive purpose of a university and i think everyone who works at the university does feel that sense that they're doing something really positive for society particularly around uh creating a space where lots of young people come and they learn and they develop their citizenship and they um go on to be uh good graduates and excellent employees and, and uh, um, generally uh, good citizens of, of the future. So there is a real sense of mission in that, I think. The university's been very good actually at investing, uh, not only in my personal development, but the development of my team. So um, to talk about my own personal development, when I came to university, there were lots of uh, things that I had to get to grips with in a university environment. Uh, even some of the language that's used in, in universities and there were lots of uh, what you call localised training sessions and inductions for staff, which really gave me the foundations to, to develop in higher education then uh, there's a, a second so there was a suite of things like that that just got everybody has got everyone sort of grounded to work in that environment and then beyond that there's been lots of really useful um, pieces of work that I've done around my own personal development so public speaking I, I was in my previous job I was uh, primarily a journalist who only wrote things I didn't really speak to people about things and or issues so I wasn't particularly very confident that in my new management job I would be presenting lots of powerpoints and uh, to large audiences so I did uh, some public speaking training which was really useful 
I uh, have done uh, some training around uh, boundary training and, and, and things that uh, make sure that I'm protected and uh, young people are protected when if, if there are issues of vulnerability, which I think is really important and really helps develop uh, an understanding of the breadth of uh, um, young people who come to university and their, their needs and their, um, their, their challenges, which I think is really important. Um, I've done social media training, which is incredibly useful. Even though I'd worked in a media environment, uh, there's lots of uh, different um, different ways of communicating via social media, and it's quite a powerful tool, particularly in uh, my realm of public engagement. That um, you know, some people will say, if it didn't happen on Facebook, it didn't actually happen. You know, it's that kind of uh, um, thing you've got to kind of get to grips with. Whereas ten years ago. In my previous job, social media was an, an, an alien concept. So uh, there's been uh, lots of different bespoke pieces of um, uh, development. And one of the biggest pieces uh, still ongoing is that because my work involves working with researchers, and yet researchers speak and uh, behave in very different ways to uh, um, uh, or, or have different expectations about how data is collected and, and, and how uh, data is used. That when, when I started at the university, working with researchers was a big part of my job, but I didn't wholly understand some of the language that they were using or the, what, the necessity to, to uh, gather data in certain ways or frame uh things in a certain theoretical way and uh, i'm i was there to kind of get a job done bluntly and they they were speaking to me and you can't just do it like that and i, I initially i couldn't uh really um develop a strong working relationship with this group and then ultimately the the university thought a, a useful solution to this would be if I started to uh, develop my own academic career uh, concurrent with my job, that I'm, I would work better and, and uh, stronger with uh, a, a, a group of researchers. So um, I started at a PhD uh, focused on the work that I'm doing at the university. And um, since I've started that, I've obviously got a greater understanding of uh, theoretical frameworks and uh, uh, research demands and data gathering and ethics and, and all of these other things that perhaps a day-to-day -day, a typical project manager wouldn't uh, wouldn't necessarily think were uh, relevant to delivering a good project so I've been really grateful for that actually and I've got about another year to go to complete my PhD which I'm really excited about it's been very demanding but it's been very rewarding and very crucial to my uh, um, career at the university. There have been several opportunities I think at university that I would not have had certainly in my former job. Um, they, um, so I regularly travel overseas either on uh, student trips or um, to present at conferences, um, whether that's all going to change actually now with how, how this new remote way of working it will be quite interesting. But it, fundamentally, I have an international uh, network of colleagues who, who are focusing on public engagement and, and civic missions of university um, in um, Central Europe and, and beyond. So uh, that the idea that I would have this collegiate community of, of uh, people in my previous job would have been unimaginable unimaginable really um, so so that's been a, a uh, big big opportunity for me the career development actually in, in my previous job um, was there was this kind of a everything leads direct in, in, in newspapers typically everything led in the direction of going up the management ladder to one day become editor um, and th there's there was only one 
sort of game in town you, you if you were good enough you might become an editor one day but if you were if you're not you're kind of in this uh management glass ceiling i suppose and um so i think there's in the university there's actually so many different directions you can take your career because universities quite are quite big places with lots of people lots of lots of distinctive roles in lots of uh significant leadership structures so yeah you might I, I, well i don't actually think the position of vice chancellor is open to me on, on my current academic skill set anyway but that would be, that would have been the equivalent of in my old old job of of the editor like the the person at, at the top who might be your aspiration to try and be but actually you have in within the university you have a, a uh, most university structures they have a vice chancellor and then a tier of pro vice chancellors or deans and then below that a, another tier of assistant uh, or deputy deans and uh, other supporting staff and concurrent to that you have a similar sort of structure uh, for professional services with uh, um, uh, senior directors directors and uh, deputy directors so so there's more uh, opportunity and and more um, more jobs to aspire to, I, I suppose you would say. So I think the the linear structures of, of of lots of corporations possibly don't lend themselves to career development in the same way as working at a university. And uh, universities as huge entities that invest lots of money in their community by developing new buildings for their students or uh, developing research initiatives which their staff engage in it means there's always usually some something that's quite high profile and 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 uh, interesting that cuts across lots of people's different jobs and you learn lots of things about different processes and different requirements of initiatives so i think just the, the breadth of uh, activity within a, a university and the sheer number of people who work in universities make it quite a unique thing compared to um, compared to a um, typical office environment. University is a very social place uh, because um, there are departments, there are directorates, there are faculties. So there are lots of different groups of people working together. And then outside of that, you have lots of people working on projects that cut across all of these departments. So you get to know a lot of people with a lot of different skill sets uh, quite quickly. Um, in terms of a social environment, the university works hard to bring people together, to support common causes, to uh celebrate uh things that um would be deemed a success for the university uh so there's lots of social interaction we're also very inclusive so uh we um, don't always base our celebrations around drinking alcohol and partying necessarily because we have a huge uh, um, number of staff who culturally don't drink um, so we look at different ways that we bring people together to um, celebrate and share our successes. Um, we um, make a big deal of um, events throughout the year uh, from different cultures and, and make sure that uh, we encourage everyone to participate in that. Uh, this, this ranges from uh, the Black History Month festival that we, we do really well at the university to Diwali to uh, Christmas um, activities and so there's lots of opportunities that bring people together and uh, um, develop that interaction. We do have uh, some really great facilities on campus that uh, staff do have access to. Um, we have a, a fantastic sports centre and I, I know it's fantastic because I walk around it, I don't actually use it maybe some some people maybe should say I, I should use it a little bit more, but the uh, uh, staff and the students uh, use a, a, 
the Queen Elizabeth uh, Sports Centre, which is on the edge of campus. It's an eight million pound development. It has a gym, a swimming pool, and um, lots of other other um, leisure facilities uh, within it. So that's a really great resource for the university. And there are other resources within the university that uh, uh, staff uh, can can use. Um, uh, and these these are um, available to be booked for by staff groups so like spaces that can be used and obviously all, majority of spaces have AV and, and uh, things that people can host events in or I know there's several staff clubs meet together I know it's quite a, uh, a famous public speaking club that meets on a Monday night at seven o'clock which all staff are invited to uh, where they just do debating sessions and things like that which have been hugely a hugely popular social activity over the years so there are um the infrastructure and the actual uh, physical uh, layout of the university lends itself to allowing staff to do uh, uh to interact or to improve their health or um just to get together and and, and do things in a social context so yeah, again, that's probably is another unique thing about um, universities in that they tend to have uh, magnificent campuses with lots of interesting spaces in them. In um, two or three things, really. So when when I was not long after I started out, I was a couple of years into the job. I, won a Guardian Award for uh, community engagement. Um, I'm sure it was uh, had a flashier title than that, but that was broadly, that, that, that was what it was for. So that really made me feel more confident and that felt very rewarding. A couple of years ago, I was able to uh, uh, work with an organization called CARA which is the Council for At-Risk Academics and we were able to bring uh, three Syrian scholars to uh, De Montfort University to study PhDs and I've always been really proud of that how staff united behind this idea and we were able to uh, support and integrate those three students into our community and all three of them now are within one year of graduation so that might be a proud moment in um, a few months time the um, thing that really stands out for me at the moment is as part of my work i lead on uh, a the united nations global hub for sustainable development goal 16 and that's a really huge honor that the united nations have, has chosen uh, de montfort university and the work that we have done in the past around uh, social social justice and equality and um, our public engagement and has recognized has recognized our work and has given us the uh, um, the title of um, SDG 16 hub and that uh, has got about and the hubs are I believe on a three year cycle and we're halfway through that so I'm very proud to be working on that and it was a career highlight to have been able to one receive uh, the opportunity from the United Nations to take it forward but actually I'm very honoured to be leading on that project for the university and uh, working so, so closely with the United Nations I think that that is really exciting professionally and on a personal level I'm learning so much about approaches to sustainable development and, and issues around the world where where communities are held back by uh, a lack of um, sustainable development um, and issues related to climate change and to uh, displacement of people and, and a whole plethora of issues that uh, perhaps I wouldn't have stumbled across if uh, I wasn't working closely with the UN. So I think that stands out for me. My uh, tip really is to um, understand the different gradings 
that, that the jobs are at. So in De Montfort University, I think it starts at uh, grade A, which is quite low level and skilled, and it goes up to grade H, which is a senior management level. And um, understand the um, salaries that, that each of those gradings represent and see where you personally pitch yourself at so if you're so because you don't want to come into a job you can't do because the the way it's graded typically means that the responsibilities of that job are reflected in the salary so so that's quite a, um, a useful thing to learn and and actually my salary at the newspaper was very similar to the salary i started on at the university and uh, i think that's why i was one of the reasons possibly I was a good fit in that, that those two levels of salary matched. Um, the other thing is, as I mentioned earlier in the interview, think about the skill set that you have um, rather than the job titles you've held. So at, at the university, there lots of those job titles are very uni unique to the university environment. So really look at a, a job that, uh, that may you may think you might be attracted to but also look at other jobs and what they're asking and what type of uh, skill set they're looking for so if you're a manager in a bank could that could those managers could those managerial skills be uh, transitioned into a university environment uh, because you might be you might be managing a research project but actually the demands of managing a research project might be very similar to working in in an in a uh, external office environment where you're looking at finances, HR, um, project management and that kind of thing. So kind of just drill beyond the initial job titles because I think the job titles are um, not necessarily restrictive but sometimes they don't necessarily tell the whole story of what the job is and and think about on the, on the personal level think about the the skills the, the strong skill sets you have and the type of work that you want to do. So I, I, I would guess that that would be uh, my approach if I had to go through it again and 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 look at whether higher education was an option for me. I would certainly look at the job descriptions as well as the job titles. <laughs>